guys and gals, it's Rob here from drumsaword.com, bringing you another free video drum lesson. Today I'm going to show you how to play that cool drum intro from the song Inner Tiatic ESP, or Inert Sciatic, or Inner Sciatic ESP, I'm not sure how you pronounce that word, uh, by the Mars Volta drums um, by the amazing John Theodore. Um, now I've got a free PDF that comes with this lesson, you might want to have this printed out in front of you as I go through this lesson, you'll find the link beneath this video for the free PDF. Like I said, it might just help you to have it in front of you as we go through this video. Um, and I've written tempo 170 BPM, so uh, we've got this sort of tempo going by. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. So pretty, pretty fast. And if we take a look at the first line, we've got the first bar, in fact. This is why I wanted to teach you this, um, this film in particular, because it features this really cool set of rhythms that I like to call the fuddler dump, or uh, the bucket of fish, or um, some people can also call, uh, also be known to call it, including myself, the bonham triplet. Although it's debatable what actually classify it as a bonham triplet, because it's like two or three versions uh, of triplet ideas that he played that people call the bonham triplet, but you could call it that. Anyway, it's this idea. Used a lot by drummers um, as like a full stop. Really nice little idea, very, very heavy, very rocky. And if we take a look at the first bar, we've got our first fuddler dump starting on the and of beat one. The bar starts, however, and we'll leave out the hi-hat foot playing on beats one, two, three, and four for now. Just take a look at what the hands and the bass drum foot are doing. We get a flam on beat one, one, and then the first fuddler dump, or triplet, starts on the and of beat one, and two, and. So if we count properly, or officially, one, and two, 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 and one, and two, two. I'm going and two, two. That's how I count 16th note triplets. One and two two and did 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 One and two and and two and three. So here's our tempo. One and two and three and four and one and two and three four. One two three four. One and two and three. Do a little bit slower. One two three four. One and two and three four. One and two and one and two turn. One and two two ta. However you want to count it. And then from beat three, we've got the same idea occurring again, sort of. It's, it's, it's a, it's a, uh, um, a fuddle dump. Um, but it starts on beat three, and it's played between the floor tom and, um, I'm going to call this the high tom. Just two toms, really. Um, the lower the toms are better, so perhaps I could have used these instead, but it's a bit of a twist around, so I'm going to use these two drums. But between two low toms, it's the fuddle dump played that way. And that bass drum now lands on the and of beat three. Three to to and. So slowly the whole bar. One and two and three to to and four and one and to two and three to to and four and. That's how it sort of sounds together. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. And if we sort of go up to tempo. Which is fair enough, which is quite cool and which is quite tricky on its own. I love that, the way it goes from um, two different fuddle dumps and one uses the snare drum and the other one uses the toms. I just love that idea. So of course what makes this drum feel extra tricky to play up to speed is adding in that hi-hat foot. So that's what we're gonna try and do now. I'm not gonna make lots of mistakes here um, because I'll be honest with you, I haven't spent a lot of time on my four-way independence. I, I, there's a few grooves I feel comfortable maintaining the hi-hat foot on quarter notes or eighth notes. But when it comes to complicated patterns like this, um, um, I haven't really spent the time learning to really make, make, make my hi-hat foot solid. So forgive me here, it's going to sound pretty bad until I get it sort of up to speed. Some of them are going to sound awful, some of them are going to be spot on, but I thought I'd keep all my mistakes in so you can sort of see how I struggled with it. Maybe you'll find the same. So what I found tricky to start off with is actually playing it slowly, like, like a lot of things in drumming. Um, you, uh, after you've been playing a few years, when you speed up, sort of parts of your body become like muscle memory, and so you can sort of forget about them as you play something else with other two limbs. But when you're playing it slowly, everything comes down precisely, and it's, you have to really think about what lines up with what. So this is where I make lots of mistakes. So we're going to try and play the first part. I might just break it up into two halves. One and two and three and four and... That's the first bit. Hmm. And that, that's what it should feel like on beat two. Two and three, four. That's better. 
and let's try and do the second half. One and two and three and four. One and two and three and four. Notice that bass drum's gonna fall on three and four. Three and four, exactly in between. Let's try and put the, the whole bar together. One and two and three and four and four. getting it now and sort of up to speed. So you can work on making that sound much nicer than I just did there. I must admit that was that was kind of sloppy and embarrassing. Um, but I got away with it and with a bit of practice I'd get better at that. And so you, you probably find the same yourself. Let's move on to the rest of the intro now. So that's our first bar, the coolest part of the fill. Get that down, the rest is going to be easy for you. The second bar on the first line of the uh, uh, PDF I've given you, just a bar of quarter notes on the hi-hat foot, nothing complicated. And then for the next line, John comes in with a drum fill, uh, 16th notes, one E and two E ands. So we go from beat one up to the and of beat two. One and two and three and four and one E and two and three, four. Starts with the right, ends with the right. So that's that little drum fill there, nice and simple. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Then the next bar of the second line is just four more quarter notes. The third bar is that idea getting repeated again, the, the fiddle of dump. Like that. And then the third line, we've got just a bar of quarter notes. So we've got these spaces in between each of these licks where um, uh, in between each fill where you just play a bar of time on the hi hat foot. And then for the um, uh, second bar of that last line, on a crash cymbal, one and two, one and two, sorry, a bit sloppy there, one and two, and I've written there um, as a choked crash cymbal there for beat two, one and two, so grab it with the same hand that you're playing the crash cymbal, and miss it like that. That's what you got to do, one and two, three, four, the rest of that bar is rested, three, four, and then we come in with one the end of two, that last bar is only half a bar, uh, uh, half, a, half a length of a bar, so you've got two beats in it. It's a bar of two, four, two quarter notes in that bar. So it's just a short bar. One the end of two. And then the very next beat, which would be beat three if it was a bar of four, four, but it's not, it's going to be beat one of the next bar, come in with that drum beat. Which I might do a drum lesson on at some point, because I think it's really cool. So um, that's basically it. Now let me just play for you one more time. Uh, uh, we're up my microphone on so you can hear just the drums. Here's what the whole thing sounds like played up to speed. And there you have it. With a little bit of practice, I might get this down and make it a lot more tighter. Uh, it might get me more comfortable playing with my hi-hat foot, keeping that independence going. That's always a great thing. I don't think it's essential in drumming, not as essential as some drummers um, insist it is. It's not really. It's useful to have. It certainly balances um, your playing out, but um, uh, I never spent a huge proportion of my time on the um, uh, uh, independence, of the, keeping the hi-hat foot maintained, because it, it's just a, well, I, I didn't think it was essential to my drumming career anyway. So, yeah, with a bit of practice, I'll get better at that. Hopefully you will as well. If you've got any questions, you can always email me, robertdrumsaword.com, contact me through Facebook or Twitter. I'll be happy to answer any questions you might have. And you might want to consider signing up to become a member at drumsaword.com. Just visit my uh, website. You'll find a link beneath this video. Click on the How It Works button on the top of my website, and uh, you see a little video popping up explaining what it is I offer. Uh, if you sign up to become a member, you get access to uh, over 200 full song lessons, not just these mini videos I do for you, but also full song lessons. You get the full drum chart. I teach you a song from start to finish. There's over 200 of these famous and popular songs on my website already. You sign up for $97 a year. You get access to all that material instantly, plus hundreds of freebies I give you, little mini videos, three ebooks which I wrote. And then all the new material that's released over the year of your subscription, you get instant access to as well. So I think it's a great bargain. But again, if you've got any questions, feel free to email me, robertdrumsaword.com. Until next time, toodle pip, have fun, happy drumming to you.